Now it's time to assemble the pieces using the pattern as a guide. This zinc molding will frame the panel, its inner groove fitting over the edge of the glass. The artist positions this molding along the perimeter of the pattern. Then she drills an L-shaped wood frame into the work table to hold everything in place during assembly. A few nails keep the molding in place. She'll join the pieces of glass using strips of lead called came. Lead because it's soft enough to bend to the shape of the pieces. After straightening out a long strip of came, she cuts the various lengths she needs to border each piece of glass. The came is shaped in such a way that the glass on each side just slides right under. The cutting pliers, called nippers, are specially designed to slice through the came without deforming it. Once the artist finishes assembling the glass pieces, she pushes everything gently against the wood frame. This squares the panel and ensures the pieces fit together snugly. Now she brushes on flux, a type of acid. This cleans the lead came so that solder will adhere well. Using a soldering iron, she applies a bead of lead and tin solder wherever two strips of lead cane join. Then she uses a short bristled brush to coat the lead in black putty. This makes the seams watertight and gives the lead a darker aged look. Finally, she sprinkles on calcium chloride powder called whiting. This sets the putty and polishes the glass and lead to a shine. After four painstaking hours, the panel is finished. More elaborate stained glass works feature hand-painted detailing. The artist first prepares a design on paper, then cuts the pieces of glass accordingly. He paints the design outline on the pieces in black, then fires them in a kiln to set the paint. To create shading, he applies a coat of brown paint called grisaille. Using a dry brush, he removes it from the parts he wants to highlight then he fires the glass again. Now he paints in the final details and fires the glass for one last time. The paint contains powdered glass, so the intense heat of the kiln bonds it to the glass pieces. The result is nothing short of spectacular. <laughs> For those of you who flunked Truck Anatomy 101, here's a quick review. The front of the truck where the driver sits is called the cab. The back that carries the cargo is the trailer. A semi-trailer is a type of trailer whose front end goes on the same wheels as the rear end of the cab. This type of semi-trailer is called a van. It has a closed-in compartment for transporting cargo that needs protection from the elements. To make the coupler plate, the part that attaches the van to the truck cab, they submerge steel plates in water to quell the smoke that metal cutting generates. They use a computer-guided plasma cutter. This powerful torch ejects hot gas at high pressure, slicing through the metal with detailed precision. Elsewhere in the factory, meanwhile, they take pre-painted aluminum panels and rivet them onto aluminum or steel support posts, the same way drywall goes onto 2x4s in house construction. These thin, lightweight panels will be the van's exterior walls. Plywood on the reverse side, its interior walls. A computerized sensor guides the robotic drills to drive screws through the plywood into the support posts underneath. For heated or refrigerated vans, there's a layer of insulation in the walls. The floor is made of either laminated hardwood or aluminum, screwed onto narrow steel beams. 
After assembling the walls, the steel door frame and doors, workers install a steel floor plate at the doorway. This protects the floor from damage when truckers load and unload their cargo by forklift. Workers fold aluminum flashing over the roof's perimeter to prevent water infiltration. Fiberglass roofing like this allows daylight into the van. Aluminum roofing doesn't, so those vans sometimes have electric lighting. Another type of semi-trailer is the flatbed, an open trailer used mostly for hauling raw materials such as logs and pipes. Heavier flatbed models are made of thick, higher grade steel. Workers cut the bulkier parts using what's called an automatic oxy cutter. It combines two gases to create a flame intense enough to slice right through metal. Once cut, the parts have to be formed to the required shape. To do that, workers use what's called a press brake, a machine that applies up to 300 tons of pressure to bend the steel. They measure the result to ensure it meets design specifications. The chassis will have two main beams running the length of the flatbed. A semi-automatic robot welds together the various welded sections that make up each beam. A worker follows behind inspecting the joints and removing welding residue. Now they position those two main beams side by side, inserting steel cross members through them to support the floor. They install the coupler plate and other components then weld everything together. Flatbeds come in extendable versions designed to accommodate loads of various lengths. They extend and retract on steel rollers operated by controls located inside the truck cab. With the chassis complete, they can now work on the